Hey guys, I want to take a few minutes and show you the second version of my PS Pi. So just like the first one, this started off as a broken PSP 1000. And this one I got off of eBay, I think I paid about $12 for it. Pretty good deal. Uh, the case is really perfect for the project. Uh, good size screen, it's got all the buttons. Almost everything on this is custom. I didn't use too many of the pre-made boards. Most of it was done with a soldering iron. One of my favorite features on this is something that's really simple. And that's just the power indication light, which also doubles as the low battery light. I want to start off by just powering it on and showing it in action. So it's got all the basic emulators on here. All this is included with the RetroPie installation. There haven't been any customizations done to it. I've added a few ROMs. Alright, now that we're booted up, I'm going to show you some of the controls. I've used pretty much all the original buttons from the PSP. You know, up, down, left, right. Even the triggers work for quick scrolling. Start works. Select. Just really handy for getting out of the game. Uh, I'll go ahead and load one up. This is all built in the RetroPie, but you can hit start and select and exit out of the emulator. I did add a switch for the audio. On the left side here, what used to be for Wi-Fi. Just a quick easy to access switch if you want to cut the audio off. Of course, you can still go into options and change it from there, but sometimes it's just nice to have a switch. You can see the power light. I use the original PSP LED, and you can see it's green right now. It's also got the ability to switch to orange when the battery goes low. I've got it set right now when the battery's at about 20%, that light will change to orange. One other cool feature is a charge indication. So right now you'll see the light's green. If I was to plug it in for charging, you'll see it switches to orange. That gives indication that the battery is charging right now. And as soon as it hits 100%, that light switches to green even when it's plugged in. Another cool feature the button that was used to power it on also can be used to power it off. A quick press, and it issues a shutdown command, fully shuts down the Pi and powers everything off. And right now, zero power is being used, so it can stay in this state. There's no switch that has to be turned off. While it's powered off here, I'm going to give you a quick look at the charge indicator. So even when the system is off, plugging it in gives you an indication LED. Right now it's orange showing that it's charging and as soon as the battery hits 100% that light will switch to green. Now if you look at the top here you can see the original PSP mini USB port. So that is functional. It hooks directly to the Pi Zero and it's useful for many things. You can hook an external keyboard, really any external device. Uh, it can be used to add games. So you just use an adapter like this that adapts mini USB to a standard USB, plug any device into it, and it's just as simple as plugging it in. So that's really all the exterior features. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the inside.
Here is the Raspberry Pi, and that is the Pi Zero. There's a couple circuits on here that are custom built. This is one of the main ones. This is the power on off circuit. So that allows the Pi to go down to a, a zero power state once it fully shuts down. And if you check out my site, you can, you can see how all these circuits work. So that's the power on circuit. Uh, right here, this is the low battery warning and it's adjustable. You can set it to whatever voltage you want to turn that low battery indicator light on. Um, right here, these wires are for the micro SD port. Just like in the last one, I used an SD to micro SD card adapter. And that way I can quickly and easily remove the SD card, make changes to the operating system if I need to, add or remove games. Although, of course, that's not the only way to add and remove games. You can also add it to a flash drive, use an adapter, and just plug in. Hidden underneath here, below the low battery circuit, is the composite LCD controller, and that just handles the video from the Pi to the LCD. There's a couple of things you can't see from here. There's a charge controller for the lithium battery, and that handles the 5 volt in, charging of the lithium battery, and the 5 volt out. It's underneath, so you can't really see it from here. If you look at these two blue wires here, these are the USB data wires. You can see them running to the jack here, protected by some hot glue. You can also see just barely the power wires going to that same USB port. So that pretty much covers it. If there's any questions you guys have, or if you want more details on any specific part, just let me know.